girl, you're you're in danger right uh -huh. now. And Damn. Brenna's gonna read you down. Oh, oh my God, oh my. <laughs> Welcome back, gay schools and everyone in between to our YouTube channel, The, the Horror Bandwagon. Hi, my name is Sergio. And my name is Cody. And we are boys for heart analysis. Criticism. And spooky, ooky. And sometimes kooky. Entertainment. And welcome back to another The Fall of the House of Usher reaction. Ooh, I got that whole title in a mouthful. It's the only time this episode. <laughs> only time, only time. That was a one take. It's true, I can prove it. But welcome back. We are officially continuing our journey into this dark, twisted world of Edgar Allan Poe and Mike Flanagan. And honestly, I cannot wait. Yeah. We had a bit of a sizzle party in the last one. Mm -hmm. Now, Cody, so far, is it kind of filling your Edgar Allan Poe holes? <laughs> well, I mean, when you put it that way. Yes. I I would have to say, <laughs> yeah, I so far I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely not a direct interpretation of the story, but that's what I was kind of hoping. I wanted a, a modern reimagining of the stories today. And this episode in particular, I'm very interested to see how they kind of retell it. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait. I mean, it's also hot. Mm -hmm. Like, we're like super horny in each episode so far. <laughs> and I can't wait to be that way again. Even though, also, it, it kind of feels like the show is giving you a saying, saying like, oh, you feel hot, you feel sexy, you feel bad. But there's also consequences. Uh -huh. And you guys are like in luck because you're getting two different point of views here. One person who really doesn't know anything about Edgar Allan Poe, except that, you know, something has to do with the Raven. And yes, we now know, thank you so much for all the comments, that Verna is an, an analogram. An uh, <laughs> for the Raven, for yes. Raven. But you also get the mind of someone who really likes and actually read some of the work. Yeah, and like I said, I am by no means an expert, but I will tell you what I do know and mm -hmm. how I'm loving the way that they are interpreting it. But we are not gonna make you wait any longer. So before we get started, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And if you wanna support the channel even more, you can go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the hard bandwagon. Or you can click the join button below to join our YouTube membership. And finally, don't forget to join our Discord where you can talk to us about this and anything else that's on your mind. The link is gonna be in the description below. But without further ado, uh, let's get into it. I don't know who the fuck you know. Hey, I don't care who you know uptown. You don't remove anything from the crime scene. Ooh, girl. No, that's his job. He's like, no, I'm covering this shit up right mm -hmm. now. And don't touch anything. Thank you, Sergeant. Well, hey. Thank you, Sergeant. I can't make fun of Mark Hamill's voiceover work because he actually has Legendary. amazing oh, voiceover work. So who am I? Fire Lord Ozai, the Joker. Like, the list goes on. He did play Chucky in the Child's Play remake. Oh my god. This is gross. What are you gonna do? Just like spritz some Lysol? <gasps> oh, girl. Not a survivor in here! <laughs> I just love the raspy voice coming out of his face. Except for one thing. There's one thing in there that doesn't jive with the horrible, tragic accident story. Uh-oh, what is it, girl? The wait staff. You said the wait staff left the building, all of them? Could be a smoke break, but that's the question. I love that they caught that. Mm -hmm. I didn't think we were gonna circle back on that. But also, did the guy's wife leave? No. Oh, shit. And they don't know that yet. Although I think the person who was alive was the wife. <gasps> oh, shit! Where the hell have you been? What happened? It was an accident, just a terrible accident. Yeah, oh shit. Girl, we told you to get out of there. In trial, it all gets juiced. Fuck's sake, Camille, our brother just died. Half brother. You fucking cunt. Oh, see, this is what I said in the previous episode. I felt bad for him because mm -hmm. he was like 
the one that everybody really didn't care about. Yeah. It's public sympathy. Okay. What would you do? I mm. two dozen memorial profile pieces to start. I You can still do that. I think it's best to keep it out of the family. I agree. It's an attack on him. What else? We'll do profiles on dad and you and the siblings because they're going to carry on the charity work in his name. But you know what? Get it, girl. Mm -hmm. She's quick. She's quick on her feet. You know, that's what I need. I mean, I'll hire her. She's the communications director for a reason. She is going to be the pub publicist. Publicist. <laughs> the publicist for the horror bandwagon. That's why they hate us. Not because we grabbed the opportunity, but because they didn't. Man, I've always wanted to just, like, mic drop and walk out of a room all dramatically. Yeah. Goddamn her. Mike Flanagan gave her such good material. <laughs> and somebody who will do the job. You're the supposed permits. to take the fucking building down. The, the permits. Guys, this is not a conversation to have out in the open. We've learned that many characters just don't care. They're in their own little bubbles. Prospero Usher's death is a tragedy. I was just saying. <gasps> Love it. This outfit. So hot. Unfortunate painkillers and justice must be served. Are you saying that Prospero Usher's death is justice? There it is. No, of course. He literally said, like, he kind of deserved it. <laughs> Do you actually want me to send him an edible arrangement? I can't tell. Toby, damn it. Everybody knows that edible arrangements are what you send to people you hate. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I'm so sorry, Mom. <laughs> For the past few Mother's Days. Like you said, the problem is with the livestock count. What do you mean? I mean, the numbers don't work. There's animals missing. Uh, uh oh, I don't like this. She swaps them out. A chimpanzee dies on the table. Rumor is she pulls another, shaves his chest, makes an identical incision. So it's not the amount of test. No, it's not the idea that they're testing on animals. It's the amount that they're actually doing it on. Pieces. There's been some jokes about her lining the inside of her Birkin bag with plastic and oh. taking the pieces to an incinerator. Wow. Oh, girl, you and me both. Actual real-time reactions right now. Sorry about that. How are you? you okay? Oh, yeah. I'm so just... they were talking about her, right? Yeah, so what I think they were saying is that, like, the way that numbers are reported is that the animals that they're testing on are dying in, like, amounts that are consistent with normal laboratory yeah. testing. But that... There's weird numbers in the animals that are surviving the testing that, like, animals are just disappearing. And so the rumor is that they are basically getting rid of extra animals that die and using live animals in their place to make it look like animals are surviving when their death rate is actually much higher. <sighs> Animal testing fraud. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <gasps> It's Miss Verna. Oh God, your next girl. Oh no. How wonderful. Have a seat. I just love that she's kind of just like a, like a, uh, like death, mm -hmm. right? Like just death walking around in different costumes. Human test. Who's this? Oh, no, no, no. You're messing with the wrong person. Who are you doing there? I texted you an hour ago. Really? Fuck, I guess my edible's kicking in. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> just relax, baby. Just relax. Line of my PR campaign, and you just took an edible? You want some? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I want some. Yeah, I, <laughs> I knew that was happening. How old were you when you met the old man? 18. That's right. I was 20. What? She was 20 years old when she met her dad. <gasps> There's just so much to uncover. Farmer bollocks. Like, I make video games, you know? You give money to people who make video games. We don't make shit. So he's a producer, I guess. He's that kind of producer. And I spin and I spin and I spin and I don't go anywhere. Ushers don't make stuff. None of us. Damn. That's deep. That is being high talk. <laughs> you got a cat? She's mine. What? Hey, Pluto? Black cat? Leave that Black cat is the next baby. episode. <gasps> oh my God. Verna is in the fur form of, oh of a cat. <laughs> oh my God. She's everywhere. Now, not saying that, you know, we have to have a sex scene between, you know, him and his bro boyfriend. Um, but I'm not going to be 
mad about it. No, not at all. No, I mean, if you, you know, if you just want to give that to us. Yeah. Hey. I brought some Monty. Oh. You want some Monty? Oh, death was... What is Monty? Are we out of touch? Do we not know? Should we know what Monty is? Oh, no. When life hands you lemons. Make lemonade? No. Pay other people to make lemonade for you. One's called Lemon Drops. You get Apple to call their new operating system OS Lemon. Little accent over the O, you charge. If I got you a bouquet of lemons, would you like that? I know this is symbolic of something else, but like. I would make lemonade with that. Cool. For copyright infringement when that genetic code shows up on their land. Sit back, rake in the millions, and then. That actually happened, by the way. What? There was some, I can't remember the name of the company. I shouldn't be blanking on it, but there was a big like agriculture company yeah. that uh, that genetically modified seeds. Okay. And then, of course, wind carried the pollen and it cross-pollinated with farmer's fields. What? And they sued the farmers because they were now growing, by no fault of their own, the genetically modified, Damn. like, patented, yeah. What the fuck is Monty? It's a street-engineered derivative of ligodone, your oh. drug, in his system. Oh, shit. No fucking way. I wonder if we're going to dig into this later, and that's where the cask of Amontillado is going to come in. I don't even know what that means. It is one of the episodes, I think. Oh, okay. Um, But maybe Monty is short for Amontillado. Shit. What is it? Oh! <gasps> What is, what is that? Oh, oh my God, oh my God. How did she die? Oh, this is so creepy. You assume your company will act ethically with your pitch. You assume. Oh. Yeah, take a breather, mm -hmm. take a breather because that was fucking horrifying. Oh my God. <laughs> Man, I would be out of there. I'd be like, I think I'm good. I think we've we've gathered enough information. Yeah, but this is like he's been waiting for this guy to crack. I know. For so long. In his contract, any intellectual property that he creates while in their employ, no, no. especially utilizing Landor's facilities, no, no. He told shall me that remain he the sole. Oh no. I think he got fucked over by a contract. An idea is nothing. An idea is a fart that your brain makes. Put that on a poster. <laughs> I actually love that. <laughs> Amount of five hundred dollars. I don't have to do oh. this, okay? I don't. I thought there was gonna be some more zeros. Yeah, five million dollars. And five hundred bucks on top. Five hundred dollars right now. It is huge for us. Yeah. Is this a good Aww. thing, right? The wife just seems so sweet. Sweet, supportive. Don't know what's gonna happen to her. Social services. Broke it all up when I decided it was time. This actress is really channeling what the mm -hmm. what the older actress is doing. So good. We'll never understand that. And I don't like her, honey. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't. Damn. You know what? At least she's honest. Mm -hmm. But she just doesn't trust her. And I totally get that. I think that's she, fair. She just had a monologue being like, you're going to sneak your way over to the top and then you're going to fucking destroy him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's super hungover, though. Yeah, this seems rough. This does not seem fun. Oh, oh, oh. Why is there blood on your hands? What is, why is there blood? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did he rip out his dick or something? Girl, check on your people. Check on your people. Okay. Still alive. Phew. Boyfriend, check. Good. What about the cat? Oh no, he ate the cat. I don't, ate? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, you bastard. You hot bastard. Now did they have to show us the cat? The pussy guts. Ooh, pussy guts. That's a that's an energy drink in the making. The wait staff all say the same thing. They didn't see her face. Red cloak, killer body, that's it. But it looks like maybe So she actually shows up on camera. 
Yeah, she's not. She's not like a figment of she's imagination. Not a ghost. Yeah, she's not in their mind. Though I'm wondering if they're gonna like connect the dots and be like, oh, we know her. I put a food bowl out. See, I I, I put it out as soon as I woke up, and I haven't I haven't heard. You're making yourself seem more suspicious that you're on top of things. Pluto, by the way, was the name of the cat in the Black Cat. <gasps> so. Ooh, Cody is still coming in with the references. Oh, my oh God. she's literally starting to realize where she's at. Oh, please, 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 please. Oh, no, stop touching yourself. Stop doing that. Yeah, not good, not good. Is she like peeling her skin or something? I think so. Oh, girl. Peeling skin was not something I thought was going to happen in this show. With all respect, that part of this is not happening. Oh, my God. You fucking children. It just happened. They fell in love with each other. Communication in a threesome is very important. You're in love. Yeah. Oh, God, my fucking day. Okay. <laughs> so bad for you. We're really sorry. This is a full service position. I don't have... The, I have... Okay. I have By full service, meaning full service. A girl who knows what, he, what she wants, apparently. Mm -hmm. After I finished paying off your student debt, Tina. My name isn't <laughs> Tina. You know that my name is. Oh, shit. Makes me laugh. So at work, you're fucking Tina. That is fucking iconic. No, you're not quitting. You're fired because you're all but useless to me now. If you can't perform your designated tasks and I will not. But it kind of seemed like they were really good at their jobs. You've been through a lot in the last day, whether you admit it or not. You're late. Mm. Oh. Where's Lauren? Now yeah, she's under the weather. Ah! Oh, I loving the connections that she's going into. You're candy. I'm whoever you want. Oh my god. Iconic. She is literally being so many different things. Give her the Emmy. Please give her the Emmy. Carla for Emmy 2023. Mm -hmm. I if that happens this year, I think maybe 2024. You know who I also think she is, Verna? Who? Is the girl who gave the Monty. Oh, yeah, she's, 100%. Do you I thought that, too, because I'm because like, we're not we're seeing not her seeing face. face. <laughs> so I think that's her. We're, we're on you. Oh, my God. I'm loving this. I just got chills. I just got chills. The family or anything else. Not tonight. She's done her homework. She has. How was your day, Bill? My day. Uh, oh. Did you see how he was like, no one's ever asked me that? Tell me all about it, love. So her kink is seeing somebody else be a better wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> Girl. I have to say, so far, this episode is is not what I was expecting, but I'm loving it. Okay, I'm loving good. the direction it's going. Okay. Shouldn't be here. Roderick Usher is my father. Berta is everywhere, girl! Walks by with her drippy Birkin bag full of monkey bits, and so unless you'd like me oh. to audit your... Girl has one bad day, and now she's spilling everything to, like, mm -hmm. a random person. What's a six-letter word for fucked? Fucked. Fuck. <gasps> You are Verna. You are Verna. I need to watch my back. But you shouldn't be here. And you don't have to be here. That's all I was saying. Open the door. She warned her. She warned her. <sighs> oh. This makes me sad. I don't like this. <laughs> oh my fucking God. Not good, not mm -hmm. good. But I can definitely tell where her fate is gonna be. <gasps> I knew it. Oh, girl, I'm sorry. This was a nice run. You were iconic. Disease. And if a sizable donation was made to support the conservation of wild. 
It's like they're connecting. It's kind of like, like they're like, know who she is. I mean, on paper, you should be allies, the bastard daughters of Roger Gusher. What an alliance you could have made. And Damn. Berna's gonna read you down. Okay, fired is the wrong word, because I'm gonna have you fucking killed. Oh! oh my fucking God. She picked better. She's Mother Teresa, as far as I know. Girl, you're, you're in danger right uh -huh. now. Sorry. <gasps> Just like the monkey. This is wild. This is wild. Oh my God. She has the same face as me. You still didn't need to come here though. It could have happened quiet, peaceful. Girl, you're right. Let me get out of here. Really, I'll mind my business. Fuck it. I got mine. <gasps> oh! oh, that was so cool. That was so cool. Oh, it's just kind of like the animals let them have it. Mm -hmm. It's like, Revenge. Oh. Woo, look at that face. Oh. Oh my God. Holy fuck. Oh yes, this is so cool. This was so like the climax. All right, guys, so that was our reaction to The Fall of the House of Usher, episode three of season one. Uh, this was called The Mur Murder in the Rue Morgue. Mm -hmm. Now, during this episode, it seems like we're getting hints and little splish splashes of other stuff yes. that we may be covering down the line. I know Cody was like, ah, I need to talk <laughs> about it. Um, but let's talk about Murder in the Rue Morgue right. first. So let's, uh, I'll give you a, a, the Sparknotes version of the source material. So um, the Rue Morgue, or I should say Murder in the Rue Morgue, is a story that takes place What is it called? Rue Morgue? Well, so I'll get to that. So okay. it takes place in Paris. Okay. And in, in Paris, uh, well, in French, Rue means street, I think. I didn't take French. Please, I'm sorry if I got that wrong. But Someone right now is being like, um, actually, <laughs> Cody. <laughs> but so the room where is like a neighborhood and okay. there is a murder that happens in the neighborhood. Okay. And the story is actually about this, this self-proclaimed smart guy who was like solving it because the police didn't know what it was. Okay. So from the story of the narrator, he has this friend, the friend is super smart. He's like, let's go check out this murder scene, which I guess the police just let them do. Okay. And so he like puts everything together and right. solves the murder. And uh, and what it turns out, because it's this like horrible thing, this woman and her daughter living on the fourth floor of this building, no one else lives in the building, but they hear these screams and then they come and they break into the, the room with the police, like okay. all the neighbors and everything who heard everything. And they find the daughter choked to death and oh. stuffed up the chimney and the mom with her head almost completely sliced off <gasps> in the garden in the backyard like this is Edgar Allan Poe yes whoa I need to start reading his, his stuff then and so the police were just like and it's like a classic locked room mystery right like they were both killed but everything is locked from the inside so how did the person how get out get, yeah so the guy figures out how like it's a it's a window that it looked like it was nailed also, shut, wait, but it hold wasn't on. hold on before you go into it, spoilers for Edgar Allan Poe works. Yes. If, I mean, these things have been around for years. So uh, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. So the twist, though, because this whole time you think like he's going to figure out like how the person escaped. Okay. The twist is that a sailor had just come back from a voyage okay. to, I think, Indonesia okay. or Malaysia, like the Southeast Asian region. Okay. And one of his friends had bought an orangutan. Oh! And the orangutan had... That's why you corrected me in the episode that's saying that it was an orangutan. Oh, well, because probably factual. And so the orangutan had uh, basically been like in the closet 
of this guy's house while it was like healing because he was going to sell it to a zoo or something to try to make some money. Okay. And he came home from work one day and the orangutan had escaped the closet and had a razor and was like pretending to shave in the mirror, which he had, oh. I guess, seen this guy do every day. Yeah. But when he went in to try to get the orangutan, it scared, he scared it and it ran out the window and ran off. And it turns out that the orangutan had shimmied up the lightning rod of this building, jumped in through the window, had been like, I guess all like whipped up into a frenzy and scared because of course the woman and her daughter were equally frightened. Okay. And had gotten mad, killed the daughter, sliced the woman's neck oh, with the razor. With the razor. And threw the woman out the window onto the ground. And the ending of the story is that he put a thing in the newspaper saying, we found an orangutan. If you're the owner and you can describe it, like, come here, you can pick it up. And so the sailor shows up and he basically gets the sailor to admit that, yes, that's what happened. Oh, so okay. I was expecting from this story that uh, that it would have been something like the doctor mm -hmm. would like take a body out of there and then it would turn out to be alive and yeah. kill him. But this was a really interesting take. I have to say, I was expecting, and I'll elaborate this on this in the next episode, I was expecting her, Camille, okay. to be the center of a retelling of the black cat. And I can't oh. wait to talk about my theory there okay, when that okay. episode is over. But yeah, we did get some hints of the black cat. I do think Monty is gonna be short for Amontillado, which is like, the in the story, it's this special wine that only this one guy makes. Ooh. And I, I'm really excited. Well, Guys, it definitely so seems great. like Verna, who is the raven, like, mm -hmm. I, I think that's what she is. Also like, just death, which I think like, ravens represent right yes um so well the romans believe that ravens were the soul of the dead so yeah. they would appear by the body after somebody died but i mean like from the perspective of someone who hasn't been familiar with the work one i'm loving hearing you talk about what the actual work is and what they're taking from it and i i'm appreciating it even more because i love how mike flanagan incorporated the orangutan story in mm -hmm. a very very unique way yes for this storyline. Um, and it's kind of, it's so, one, you, you're you hearing all this stuff about animal testing and honestly, animal abuse, uh, which I'm not about. I I hate this. So like for me, I'm like, yeah, it's a ragged day. <laughs> like, it's kind of a revenge story for this. And also it makes sense for Verna to be like, there's consequences to what one, your family is doing, mm -hmm. but two, you are also, someone who is trying to collect a lot of information from everybody for God knows what, but I think just to have under her belt um, and really, really backfires on her. Well, interestingly enough that all the quote unquote bastard children that consider themselves bastard children are kind of being knocked off first. Yes, I, and I actually want to say I don't know all of their ages exactly, but it almost seems like they may be going like well, from the most recently no. born back. Or was she, she Camille... found out? No, no, no. Actually, I don't know because she said at one point that she found out when she was 20 and he found out when he was 18. So it kind of made me feel like she was older. Maybe. But we don't, we're not 100% sure because yeah. that doesn't really make sense. But I do love this so far. I think that. The story that's being told is great. The acting is phenomenal. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. So, so good. I can't wait for the next episode. <laughs> the other thing that I did see someone mention in the comment of our last video mm -hmm. is that the children, I think, are supposed to represent the seven deadly sins, each Ooh. one of them. And I am. Well, what really, is hers? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's for us to find out. Deal, <laughs> but, um, but the other thing, I think it's very evident. We said this in the last episode okay. that. They signed a deal with Verna, the the two. Oh, for sure. Roderick and his sister. Well, especially how, ooh, ugh, I just can't get over Carla Giugino's and I feel like I always, cause Giugino sounds like a pizzeria. Um, <laughs> I always feel bad cause I think I'm saying her name right, but I don't know. But Carla like, oh, with the way that she was like, you know, I didn't want to do this, but it is what it is. You know, like yeah. she kind of told her to a face. And even in a moment where she's giving her like fucking like sincere's, thing where like i'm so sorry that this is gonna happen to you but then she's like still hasn't changed it's kind of like she's giving her another chance but camille camille right that's yeah. she's literally was like yeah no and then still like tries to like take a picture she still hasn't changed 
crazy crazy anyways so good so we're gonna shut our traps and we are going to go and go right into the next episode please stay tuned we're gonna go ahead and film the next episode so you might see us in the same clothes but sound off in the comments below what you thought of this episode did you like it did you have other thoughts on it uh but we will see you in the next one yeah until then we have been your source for heart analysis criticism and spooky okay and sometimes kooky entertainment bye everyone bye, bye.